I first want to start off by saying that once again we're able to gather on a uh, on the day that people are out uh, are are on vacationing and instead of you know taking advantage of the beautiful weather which I was thinking actually of giving the shear outside but I said that uh, there's a special kedusha in the Beit Midrash. Uh, but but uh, Baruch Hashem, people are able to we're able to gather here together to learn a sugya in Torah. It's a beautiful thing. Now, before I start, all of what we're speaking about is not halacha limaase. Halacha limaase. Each case has to be discussed individually because there are many details. We're going to speak about guidelines, guidelines of this sugya of mesira of informants. And how that applies nowadays. There are shocking things that are written in the Shulchan Aruch. And many things that uh, seem to be an, imper- an apparent stila, an apparent contradiction. So we're, we're going to attempt to get to all the cases. I can't promise that we are going to discuss everything. But we are going to discuss the main cases. And we're going to get at least a clarity in what's a question, what's not a question. So first... The, the Sugya of Mesira is found in the Gemara in Masechet Babakama Dav Kuf Tetzayin and Mudbet in the Mishnah, and then it goes on to Kuf Yudzayin, and it discusses a, 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 a... It starts off with a case that... of Rav Kahana. Well, it starts off with a bunch of other cases, but we're going to start right away with the case of Rav Kahana. There was a person that wanted to point, and he wanted to give over uh, money of his friend over. So he came into Rav and he said, Rav, I have enough of this guy. I'm taking his money and I'm giving it over to the government. Amr lo tehfi, don't do that. Lo tehfi. Amr lehi, no. Rav, I don't care what you tell me. Marvino o marvina. I'm going to give it over. I'm going to give it over. So, Yati Rav Kama la Kameh Rav. So Rav Kahana was sitting there. Shamti la Kuhaminech. Rashi. He broke his neck. <laughs> That's what it says. He killed him. He killed him. Shocking. Rav Kahana killed him. So, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, he meant it. And you don't mess with those rabbis. Kari Rav Alei Banea Alfu Banecha Alfu Shachvu Barosh Kol Chutzot Ketoa Michmar. So Rav called him on the Patsuk. It's like a wild boar that's caught in a net. Just like a, um, a a boar that gets caught in a uh, in a in a in a net, it's for sure going to get killed. So too, and uh, a a Jew's money who falls into the hands of goyim, it is for sure that there is going to be worse things that's going to happen. The Gemara doesn't elaborate explicitly. We'll see in the moment that the Rosh does. So basically, Rav Kahana understood that this person is going to cause a tremendous sakana by giving over the money to the government, which subsequently would cause this person, this person that he's giving over his money, to endanger. And therefore, he says, "Well, I have to kill him. I have to kill him." The Rosh says, "The Rosh in Masechet Baba Kama, page two, says what allowed him to kill him." So the Rosh says, "In page two, what allowed him to kill him?" Excellent. Yeah. So the Rosh says like this. Is there, is there another copy? Because you should look in the sheets of So he says like this. Kari Rav Banech al Shukh Rosh, Matu Zikiv Hashem Nechomer En Rachmin Lav, Mamash Yisrael, Kiv Hashem Nechomer En Rachmin Lav, En Rachmin Lav. And explains the Rosh like this. V'notlin hayom miktato. Today they're going to take a little bit. V'lemachar notlin kulo. And the next day they're going to take everything that you own. V'lebesof miyav shirun hashirun. And then they're going to cause you um, bodily sufferings, and they'll kill you, that you should admit where all your money and Swiss accounts are. So therefore, Rav Kahana saw that this person is considered a Rodef. He's a person that's considered a person who's running and wants to kill you. And therefore, you're allowed to... If somebody's coming running after you after a gun... Uh, with a gun. Is there any question that you're allowed to kill him? Of course you're allowed to kill him. And this is what's happening over here. And therefore, Rav Kahana uh, killed him. Now, the truth is, the Gemara goes on later on. It's a fascinating Gemara that Rav Kahana then uh, was in big trouble because he killed somebody. And, then, and, and it, it used to be the, 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 the Persians were okay if like, people, uh, Jews kill, 
they wouldn't say anything. But now it's already the Yevanim were in charge, and they're more makbid, so Rav Kahana had to run away. He ran, over, ran away to Eretz Yisrael. Rav Kahana had a split lip, so he sat in the front of the shir of Rav Yochanan. Rav Yochanan thought he was making fun of him. Rav Yochanan got upset at him. <laughs> Rav Kahana died. And believe it or not, Rav, Rav Yochanan did chiyat hamitim on him. He revived him. It's a fascinating story. He revived him, and then Rav Kahana said, Rav Yochanan said, come back to my shir. Rav Kahana says, no way, once is enough. <laughs> and there, until, he, uh, until he promised, no, I'm not going to do anything. That, 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 that's the behemshach of the story. Wow. What, that's what you see from the Gemara, that, he, that Rav Kahana killed somebody because of Rode. So the, uh, the, the Gemara goes on. Uh, I, mean, I mean, just, to, just to, to, to solidify this point, the Shulchan Aruch says in Seif Tet, Asur Limsor Lisrael Biat Goim Ben Begufo Beben Memonro. You're not allowed to give over a Jew to a Goy, whether it's in, just his money. Not only if you're going to damage, he's not only he's threatening to kill him, but also his money. And listen to this, even if this person is a Rasha, and this person is doing a lot of Avirot, and even if he's causing him pain, it's forbidden. I'm skipping to the Ramah. I'm, I'm, I'm skipping the Ramah now. Vechola Moser Yisrael biat goyim, and whoever is going to be Moser, a a Jew in the hands of goyim, ben bikvu ben memamono, en lochelek leolam haba. He doesn't have a portion to the world to the world to come. Shulchan Aruch says not only that. Mutar laharoga Moser bechol makom. You could kill this person. Afilu bezman hazeh, even nowadays. Even nowadays, even these days. That's right. Even in 2014, yes. And you're allowed to kill him before he did it. As long as you warmed him beforehand. And only that. Mitzvah lehorgo. Vechola kodem lehorgo zacha. And whoever did it, he was zoche in the mitzvah. I don't know if they would auction it off on Shabbat who wants to kill this Moser. Unfortunately, this was very relevant in the, uh, in the Holocaust that there was, it was known to be that there was kapos and they would, they would sell, yeah, this person's a Jew, this person's a Jew. And there is one famous Rav that became a Rosh Hashiv over here in America that he was a Rav in a city in Lithuania and he actually, they brought this person to the mikveh and they kept him under the water. They, uh, they, 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 he, but he, he was being a moser. He was, he was like telling over to the Nazis, this person is a Jew. This is a, what would he? Yeah, I, and and not only that, the Gemara is talking about even even if he's giving over money, because the money is eventually going to lead to 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 the person's going to get killed. So the question, obviously, the question everyone's asking is that is this applicable in nowadays society, in our in our day and age? Is this really what's going on? So the truth is. It really matters. What does that mean? Keto amichmar. What is what is the expression that when you give a Jew over to a goy, it's like you're giving him into a net, and eventually that Jew is going to get caught in the net of the goyim, and he can eventually get killed. Is it that he's vade going to get killed? Well, nowadays you're going to give over somebody because he uh, he 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 stole something, or he cheated, uh, or he cheated the government in such a way. Is that really going to happen? He's really going to he's really going to die. First of all, it matters what state, what country, right? There's many differences in Canada and America and in other and other and other places of the world. Or is it that anytime there's a little bit of a suffix, you're allowed to kill him? So there are some post scheme that, and this is this is a, a question like this: jails nowadays, jails nowadays. There are some post scheme that understand that the jail system nowadays is a dangerous system. People could get killed in jail. People are very vulnerable in jail, and people could eventually people could eventually uh, 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 get get have have their lives uh, uh, be taken away in jail. So if a person is going to snitch on someone, and that person su- subsequently is going to have to go to jail, the pitche choshen Rav Yaakov Bloy Zichrono Libracha is posek halachot apply. Rav Ezra Batsri, a, a, a dayan in, 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 in Yerushalayim, is posek that these halachot would apply nowadays. That if somebody is going to give somebody over and subsequently cause them to go to jail, he has the deen of a moster. And all the laws of Mithira would, would apply to him. Now, Rebbe Yashiv argues, Rebbe Yashiv says the jail system nowadays is not for sure he's going to get killed. 
And th- I don't know why you think that so different. Okay, and and therefore you he doesn't have the din of a moster. There there might be other issues, but the, the moster din that you would be able to allow to kill him and end in that regard, that that wouldn't that wouldn't apply. The it's not I've seen big legal opinions say it's not so simple, like Rabbi Yashif. It could very well be that there's very big dangers in jail. I, I spoke to uh, Poskim about this, and their opinion was was that it really matters what the case is. Mm-hmm. It matters what country. Yeah. It matters what country. It matters what jail. It ma- <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Mm-hmm. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. This is stage number one. So, so let's go step by step because it's gonna, it's gonna, it's going to get more complicated. But so far, if you're a, a person who who in America, for example, if somebody violates certain uh, certain tax laws, he'll be thrown into jail, and he could suffer in sometimes the worst jail because of a tax law. Because of uh, we know cases, well, know there's famous cases going on that a person violated a simple clause in a in in a, in, a, in a type of loan law or, or some type of fraud that al pidi fine, you did that mistake, you have to pay, but by the goyim they'll throw you into a jail, and who knows what type of jail. And who knows if you're thrown into that jail if you're going to come out alive. Yeah, but sometimes you don't know which type of jail. So, so usually civil, civil cases, you're not thrown into, into... You live in Canada. And how about if you live in Colombia? And how about if you live in India? And how about if you live in third world? And how about you live in China or Japan or, 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 or countries where there might be tremendous, tremendous sakana? Criminal law or criminal law against the criminal code is a federal court. Provincial, it's the regular jails. It's not the relevant of the crime. You could be thrown into jail. Yeah, it's not. It's not a simple matter. But let us say that it's not. Okay, let us say it's not a simple. It's not a simple thing to say that he's not considered a moser. But let's say that you know that the person is not going to be killed. So then he wouldn't have this type of din moser. But now let's go on to the next Gemara. The next Gemara is in page 3, which is actually was just yesterday the, uh, the, the, the Lagba Omer, and we discussed about the Bishimon Bar Yochai and Rabbi Lazar Beno. Now Rabbi Lazar Beno, besides being a tremendous tzaddik, had a side job. His side job was being a police officer. How did, how did this come out for him to be a police officer? So it says like this. Rabbi Lazar once found a, a police officer, and he said, tell me something, how are you catch robbers? So he says, oh, I don't know, I, I, I go around. So he says, but how do you know? They're like, they're like animals. Some of them, they're so wise and they're so sly. They're like foxes. How do you know if you're catching them or if you're not catching them? So he says, listen, I don't really know. So he says, Rabbi Lezer says, let me give you an idea how you catch them. Go at, in the afternoon while they're having their, their meal and they're drinking their wine. And if you see them dozing off, so there's three options. If there are people that are Talmud Hakam, they wake up early and that's why they're falling asleep. If, if, they are, if they are workers, they wake up early and that's why they're falling asleep. But if they don't have a job and they're not Talmud Hakamim, you know that they're robbers. That's in the middle of the night, they're robbing. That's when they do their big business. In the middle of the night, you know you can catch them. So somehow, this amazing advice that Rabbi Al-Azhar bin Oder Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai gave got to, the gov- got, got to the government and they said, whoa, we want you as a police officer. So they appointed him. Rabbi Lazar was the police officer, and he would be catching people. And he would tell them, this guy goes to jail, this guy goes to the jail. So Rabbi Yoshua ben Korcha met him and said, Chomet ben Yain, vinegar son of wine. In other words, your father, Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai, was wine, and you right over here, what are you doing? You're giving people over to the, to, 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 to the government. You're, you're, you're giving, you're giving uh, uh, um, uh, innocent people, or Jew, you're giving Jews over, not, not really innocent, but you're giving Jews over to the, to the government. How are you allowed? So Rabbi Shimon said, Rabbi Lazar says, what do you want? I'm taking thorns and I'm getting rid of the thorns. So Rabbi Yeshua said, let Hashem take care of it. You have a balakarim. Let the master of the universe, the one who owns the property, let him take care of his thorns. So then there's a story that, Rabbi, that this other 
simple person, saw Rabbi Lazar and said, Hey, vinegar! Like he, he, so Rabbi Lazar got upset. He says, This guy's a mechutzef. Go catch him. They caught him. They found out that he was really guilty on a bunch of things and they hung him and they killed him. So Rabbi Lazar was a little bit guilty. felt a little bit guilty. He didn't know whether he, he was right, what he did. So the Gemara says, that, that somebody came, they told him, don't worry, Rabbi Lazar, this person was such a rasha that him and his son had relations with a, a, a girl who was engaged on Yom Kippur. So this person was a rasha like anything. So Rabbi Lazar was so happy, he says, Sisu mea sisu, my stomach should be happy. In other words, it's my intuitions of something that a safek, if he was okay, I wasn't sure if he was okay or not, and I went after my intuition, I found out that I was right. All the more so, those people that I knew were doing wrong, for sure, so, for sure that's the case. So, that's, the, that's one story of Rabbi Lazar. And it goes on, and it says, Rabbi, Rabbi Shmuel Barav Yossi also was a police officer. And who came to Rabbi Shmuel and gave him Musar, why he's a police officer? None other than, Eliyahu Navi. Eliyahu Navi came to him, page 4, top of the page. Ki amasiat aliyadeh, paga be Eliyahu. Eliyahu came to him, amarle. Until when are you going to do this? You're giving people over to be killed. What right do you have? What do you want? It's my job. The government appointed me. So he says, run away. <laughs> Wait, I understand. You're in a problem. Run away. He says, you have to have that job. Run away. So you have a Gemara over here. And it says that Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Ishmael used to give people over to the government. So they're for sure not called Muslim. Eliyahu Anavi and Rabbi Yeshua Ben Korcha understood that maybe he should, it's not a job for a good Jewish boy. Right? Police officer maybe not be a good job for a good Jewish boy. But it's not called a Moser. It's not called a Moser, right? Why is it not called a Moser? That's the question. They're giving, they're t- giving over people to be killed. So the Ridva addresses this question. The Ridva in Masechet Bava Mitzia, And the Ridva says like this. Shani hacha de shlicha de mal. Over here is different because he's the shaliach of the king. Umedine malchut laharog belo edin beatra. And dina de malchut adina allows a person to be killed even if there's no witnesses and no testimony. Kmo shereinu be David sheharag ger amaliki. So just like David, he, was, he killed an amaliki. Veshlucho shal melech kamoto. Mikom makom be makom shen koach melech laasot ken mechuke amalchut. However, if the government doesn't have the right to kill people and you're killing for them, then you're not allowed. But if you're a shalich of the government, you're allowed. So this Ritva is like uh, unbelievable. It's just basically saying is that there's, you're, you're warranted to kill someone if the government appoints you and that, uh, as, as a person able to, to, to kill. So that's, that's a big chidush unto its own. But that's what comes out. That, 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 Rabbi, um, that, 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 uh, that, that if a person would be a government, a government official, he would be allowed. So far so good? Okay. I want to start off with the teshuva of Shevet Alevi before I go further. Shevet Alevi was asked from Agon Rav Ephraim Greenblatt, the Rivivot Ephraim, Rav in Memphis, Yichon Ali Vercha, he died uh, not long ago. And he was asked the following. Is somebody allowed to work in a government CRA office or IRS office or Zmas Achnasa? So somebody wants to ask in, in Eretz Yisrael, he asked the taxi driver, bring me to a place where all the Jews cry. So he brought him to Masach Nasa. <laughs> At the, at the Western Wall. <laughs> okay. So, so you, 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 he has uh, over here the uh, somebody who's working in a government office. And what's his job all day? He goes there now. He has the name uh, Goldblatt, Goldberg, Friedman, Eisenblatt, Eisen, all these Jewish names for audit. So you allowed to say, oh, this guy, his tax doesn't uh, match his income. I'm going to flag him for audit. Is the person allowed to do that? Good job in the CRA. He gets pension or whatever else he gets, yeah? Government job, unions. He's well set up, right? He's very well set up. The accountants are on commission sometimes. They're on commission sometimes. Oh, boy. (laughs) So there you go. So what would what are you allowed to are you allowed to work in such things? So Rav Moshe Feinstein was asked such a thing, and Ra, and Rav Vosner was asked such a question, and they both answer that it's allowed for different reasons. Rav Vosner's answer is quite shocking. Rav Vosner says like this: There's no question that he's allowed, and he points to our Gemara in Bava Mitzia that Rabbi Lazar was a police officer, 
And why was he a police officer? He says, look at the Gemritva, and he says that if you're an appointee from the government, and according to the government laws, they take and they're allowed to take these taxes, so you're, you're following up on the government. You're just a shaliyah of the, of the government and you're allowed. Not only that, there's a Ber HaGola. The Ber HaGola is written on the Shulchan Aruch over here. He was, uh, he was a, uh, uh, before the Gaon of Vilna. The Gaon of Vilna was always quoting. He was family with the Gaon from Vilna. Rav Moshe Rivkash. He was, uh, he was a very, very, very prominent uh, 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 Gedolim, in, uh, one of the Gedolim brought down in the Shulchan Aruch. And the Ber HaGola says like this. I'm going to read it to you. There's a Shulchan Aruch that says, like this. There's a Shulchan Aruch that says like this. Kol ha-moser ha-tzibur u-mitsa'aran Whoever causes pain to the public and is bothering them Mutar, moser is mitsar if you look. Whoever bothers the tzibur Mutar le Moser biyad goyim. You're allowed to give them over to the goyim. If somebody's a public menace to society, somebody is a public menace. He is he is uh, he is flouting the laws. He is giving a very bad name to the Jews by by causing all types of Ponzi schemes or whatever. You're allowed to give him over to the goyim. So the goyim should put him in his place. So that they could fine him and they could put him in jail. But let's say he's just bothering one person. Let's say this guy's bothering you. He's bothering you. I'm going to call the police on you. You're not allowed. But if he's bothering the Sibur, you're allowed. Says the Beragula, Kvar Pashad HaMinhag. It already became the Minhag. Shiman Hagia Keila. The heads of the community, Omdim Alamishmar, are appointed to watch over. Shilola Sot Sheker Ve'avla Lehumot. To make sure that the government does not get cheated from Jews who are giving themselves a bad name. <laughs> and they give permission to the goyim to go after. This person is, 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 is a fraudulent person. This person is dealing with drugs. This person is dealing with, uh, with, with uh, unlawful things. And please take care of him. That doesn't mean they're going to kill him. It means that they're going to punish him. And this is what we learn in Pirkei Avot. If it wasn't for the fear of government, every person would gobble up each other. So the, the Beragula says that's the minhag of the, of the communities. And it's very similar to the Ritva. That people who are, who are deviant and are not following properly the laws, so, and, they're, they're in da- cause the, and the Tzibur is going to be in danger because now the government can impose extra taxes on the Jews and the government is going to lock up the Jews, and they're going to give them. They're going to be more careful, and they're going to give all types of negative repercussions. The Manhigi have the right to say over there, shalichim of the of the government. That doesn't mean every person has the right to decide. That means if a person, if a manhigi, if a heads of community uh, um, um, appointees are 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 in that position of power, they would be allowed to give over. But it doesn't mean just any person is allowed. So so too, Rav Azar says, a person working for the CRA, he's an appointee of the government, and this person is deviating, he would be allowed to work on the CRA. Rav Moshe Feinstein says another reason. He says, the government is forcing him to do something against his will, he's allowed. Now, it's not that this person is going to get killed, whoever he's going to give over, he's just going to get fined. So since he's in that position, and he's accepting the position the most people... It's not. It's not that he is. It's not. It's not going to be Jews that he's auditing, and it's most people also that he's not necessarily going to find that there's a fraud. It's just that there could have been a mistake in their taxes. So then he says, Ramosha finds he doesn't find it a, a a problem at all. So a person is allowed to work for the CRA. That's the question. So he finds the problem. So they say it's, he's allowed. Ramosha says it even says he says it's like ansuhu in such a case you're allowed. Kvar ones shemuchach laagida emet. So the reason why it's not called the Moser is that is that it's not it's not that this person's going to go to uh, Hariga, right? Shalom. He's not going to be be, be, be killed. It could, it could lead to that. It, it, could it? It's almost reckless. It's almost reckless. A person has to be audited. A, a person who's wait. A person who's audited to get into jail. Tax evasion. Tax evasion. That's how they get all the money. Not in the states. Right. 
So if the auditor knows the person is going to have to uh, going to get more than what he deserves and get killed because of it, it's not allowed. Rabbi Elazar and Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Elazar Rabbi Shimon was giving people over to the police. It's very clear in the Rishonim and the Gemara that those people were mechuyav mita. They killed other people, and they were uh, and they were they they they, they 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 caught things that they were mechuyav mita. But a person just because he 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 cheated on taxes could be it's not a good thing, but it doesn't mean that he has to get killed because of it. Rabbi Le- the Rabbi Elazar wouldn't have done that. Right. That's the and also over here, the Rabbi Elazar is not talking about that a person's going. He says what. You're allowed to give him biyat goyim if they if they're going to hit him and to put him in his place properly. But not chas v'shalom. There's a chashash sakana. Those guys, those guys that they do these major frauds, yeah, hundreds of mm-hmm, millions of mm-hmm, dollars, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, like the guy, some guy in America, made off. They go into jail. What is finished? Twenty-five years plus. You know, like they, you know, you the Jewish people make the determination. Yeah, so fraud, they defraud. That's a good question. So if you know the person is going to get killed, this is what Rav Loy is saying, that if they know they're going to be sent to a place where there's a chashash sakana, that could have a din mesira, and that's an onward. That's why it's very important to categorize what the case we're talking about. Is there a chashash the person is going to have his life in danger? Uh, sure. Unless he's mechuy mita. Okay. Uh, sure. So if that's the case, if that's the case, so the Ritva says because Shlucha de Malka she mutar la, uh, that, that the government is allowed to kill even without Edim. On what case? When the person was it uh, was uh, yeah, but it's not that a gun of him of him. So how else was he able to give them over Lahariga? He, but he says the Ritva says like this: Umedina Mahut Laharog below Edim. What does that mean, Laharog? So much from that way. You look at it on the bottom also. Yeah, I hear. I hear. The Meiri is not much like the Ritva, by the way, right? Yeah, we spoke about that. Yeah. Halakhically, with stealing, you just need to pay the person back as opposed to. Right. Okay, you know what? I, I want to mention a tshuva from Rav Moshe Feinstein. You know what I'm saying is that there's, there's, there's a, the Musr, does it differentiate whether it's going that Neged Allah or is it going Machuta uh, Dinu Machuta? Right. Well, the the Halakha seems to say right now the that if they're the going against Dina de Malchuta Dina and they're going to get fines because of it, only fines, you're allowed to give them over. The Manhigya Kehila are allowed. The Manhigya Kehila are allowed. A CRA gentleman is not Manhigya Kehila. He's Memuna. He, Rav Ozer says he's an appointee. And he wasn't appointed. He he's went, appointed by the government. No, he was not appointed. He was applied for the job. He's applied for the job. Yeah, yeah. 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 Baramosh. He was not appointed. No, no, no. Baramosh. No, he no, 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 said, yeah, he wasn't appointed only to go for Jews. He wasn't appointed only to go for Jews. How about in Israel? Let's say he goes in Israel. He was for the so I'll tell you, I think this might be enough coming between Rav Moshe and, and Rav Ozer, because Rav Ozer, who lives in Eretz Yisrael, seems to say that even, even if that's your main job, you're allowed, because at the end of the day, you're appointed. Ah, you have a kasha? I hear. Good question. Ah, he's not appointed, he went to apply for the job. Moshe Feinstein seems to say that you took the job because mostly you're going to be dealing with Goyen. And once in a while it happens with Yisrael, it's not your fault. So it could be that if you're going to apply in Israel, according to Rav Moshe, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> Legabe like this, yes, yeah, so Legabe like this yeah, as right. an appointee, as at least it no, has a body of a, a body of keeping justice of the system. I think so. I think so. Unless you're going to go with the Ron Foley that in Eretz Yisrael there's no such thing as even and even that we don't pass something like that, and even that I don't know if you'd be able to say it in this regard. But once you find the answer, I have a following question: You caught a robber. He stole Sifrei Torah. Mm-hmm. He stole Rimonim. He stole Pushka boxes. And that's it, he stole. Uh, you don't think he's going to steal again. They're already uh, warranted about everything. You're allowed to give him over. Are, the, are you allowed to give him over to the police? Twice. That's the question. But the verse, so what would you say? No. Maybe a want to study. No. Maybe there's what? Because <laughs> 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 Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
Believe it or not, Moshe Feinstein says you're not allowed. You're not allowed, you're not allowed to give him over to the police. Why? Because they're going to be miyasar him more than what he did. He only stole, and he only say for lo alenu. So he has to return whatever he stole. There's no such thing as kafel nowadays. So he take he, whatever he stole. Go a hundred thousand dollars. Give back hundred thousand dollars. But over there, they're going to do much work. Well, that's a blanket statement. <laughs> we're going to see. We're going to see. We're going to see in moments cases where you're machuyev to call the police. Soon. We're going to see again. But so far, this case, Ramoshi Fine says you're not allowed. It's a, a pele. He says, "I." There's a halacha that if a person is big mitzaer the public, you're allowed to. So he says, right now this guy didn't. He stole one time, and that's it. He's not being mitzaer the public. But it, it seems to be that according to the Shulchan Aruch, if this person is going around damaging the public over and over and over again, you would be allowed. Now, maybe some poskim would say you're not because they're afraid if he goes to jail, he might get killed. So that's more excessive than what the halacha would permit. Let's say you know they would put him in place. There are certain rabbanim that would permit such a thing. It, but that has to be dealt on a very sensitive scale by each case-by-case basis, what we're talking about. This is, this is Ramosha Feinstein. But, okay, very nice. Now we said that you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to give somebody over to Lo Aleinu to be a, uh, uh, if he's going to end up in jail. And if he needs the Rasha and a Bal Averot, you're still not allowed to give him over. And if you give him over, En Lo Chelek Lo What happens if you have a doctor sitting in his office, a rabbi sitting in his office, a therapist sitting in his office, and a woman comes to him totally beaten up by her husband? Or, lo aleinu, a child comes, and Rav, Rav, Rav Waldenberg was, Rav Professor Abraham was asked, Professor Abraham, besides being the, uh, uh, a big doctor, he's a very big talmud, he wrote the Sefer, Nishmat Avram. He's a, uh, Avram Sofer Avraham. He's a very big talmud, a very special person in Shari, in Yerushalayim. And he had a lot of access to the Gdolim, to Rav Shomaz Amin Orbach, to Rav Yashif. And this he, he asked to the Tzitz Eliezer, the Lezer of Waldenberg, do you have a, a, a child? that he came with a fractured skull, that his parents were beating him so bad. What does he do? He gives over the parents. The kid is going to be taken away from the parents for sure. Yeah. And he's going to be put into probably a home that eats nevilot and trefot. And, 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 uh, and furthermore, the parents might get very, very strong put, put into jail. It, there could be all types of... That, there are all types of ramifications. Number two... <coughs> How about if you have teachers in a school that are abusing children, that are abusing, sexually abusing children? What do you do then? On, it says even a person's a Rashaim Balaverot, you can't give him over. So, the first case... Yeah, different. They're putting people on the risk, their lives, because of so the first case, we're going to get to that. So the first case, he discusses, and he says, there's no question that this, per- this child who's being beaten, and if uh, sometimes, lo aleinu, also domestic violence, if a, 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 a lady is being uh, uh, physically abused, and their lives are in danger, so he's being a rodef, you give him over as fast as you can, because they're being, they're, they're the rodef now. They, they're the... They might, ki- they might kill this child. Right now, this child is in danger. You have an obligation to go. And this is the same thing with child abuse. And this, there was a big switch in child abuse, we'll say 20, 30 years ago, than afterwards. People used to think that child abuse was, was a, it's, it's a horrible thing, it's a, whatever, but it's, it was more connected the, the, to the halachot of Evena Ezer, of 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 lo alenu uh, erva zer levatel all types of things. Nowadays, studies upon studies upon studies has have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is a category in your idea of pikuach nefesh. A child who suffers for such a thing, he could live. He could he could lead to very very serious ramifications. And therefore, and 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 uh, and he he has another reason on top of that. Rav Waldenberg he says it's like rodef achara erva. 
that you're allowed to kill somebody who's rodef achar erva, and not only that, you're allowed. In other words, he that person is a rodef, so for sure you're allowed to give him over to the government. To, to, so, so this is what Revoldenberg is plastic on the on these two questions of Rav Avram Sofer Avram is that on the first case for sure, and the second case also for sure, even if there's no second of the child's life. In the second case and then, of child abuse. If they go to jail, for sure they're going to be like beyond... Uh... You're saving yourself. See, this is a different case. This is a different case. That person now is running after you. So what are you supposed to do? If a person is running after somebody else and threatening his life, a guy is standing outside, law alone in somebody's house with a gun, wait, you're not supposed to call the police? We're supposed to call the police. And if the, person's, uh, the person is trying, to, uh, is trying to damage you. Yeah, but what about this, this kid now going to a Goyish Mishpacha when they're going to the court and he's going to be raised in... in Why Goyish Mishpacha? There's plenty of Jewish families. No, 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 no. He's talking about that such a case he gets. He says it's not, a, it's not an issue right now. The child's life is a danger. Yeah. That's what Cecilia says. The other thing is the big problem, Rabbi. The big problem, Rabbi. The professional will do it. Rabbi, the professional will do it. Like he has a, a, an obligation to keep it confidential. So, Even if a, 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 a criminal comes to him. I hear. How do you deal with that? Big problem. No, 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 no. Not, not, it, I'm sorry, but, but, but uh, when there's a case of people up, whoa, 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 whoa. When there's a case of people up Nefesh, he'll lose his license if he doesn't report it, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only for health care. No, no, also for child abuse. No, 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 I don't know about lawyer, a doctor, a therapist, or yeah, a rabbi. On the on the contrary, there's yeah, yeah. there's there's laws about it. Right. There's laws about it. That that's uh, that. There's nothing to discuss. If, if I, I said we're not discussing Allah Chalim, that's not fair to discuss such a thing. You have a neighbor that you all the time hear they screaming there and and they beating him. You're allowed right away to call the police and tell them listen. Ask your local Orthodox rabbi. Yes. <laughs> no, it, it, these questions have to be dealt case by case basis. Let's say you have suspicion of somebody who's doing something and he's really innocent, so you're going to ruin his life because of it. You have to know what you're doing. Rebellia, there were, there's a very famous stuff for Rebel Yashif. It's only when there's Raglaim Ladavar, only when there's strong uh, grounds of suspicion. What does strong grounds of suspicion mean? It matters on the case and it's a sensitive subject. So obviously a person doesn't think he can pick up the phone right away and call when he suspects one thing that he has in his mind. It doesn't work that way. It has to be a very responsibly uh, uh, executed decision because it could ruin people's lives on both ends of the spectrum. It's a very, it's a very difficult situation to be in. Yes. Because, and that's the answer to your question that we were learning beforehand. He says, All right, what's this case of Rodit? Well, this person's a Rodit for me, so what am I supposed to do? I just, I, I'm going to end off with one thing. What happens when when a person, uh, give me a practical case, you have two people are, 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 are in a religious neighborhood, or you have two people in a neighborhood. One person, he invested $2 million in a house. Ah, he has a beautiful house. His neighbor across the street is making a pool right across the street from him. He's a Shomer Torah Mitzvot. The pool is right where there's going to be pritsut all the time, and he's not going to be able to use that whole side of the house. And that person across the street doesn't have a permit to build a pool. Are you allowed to call on, are you allowed to call on him or not? No. Are you allowed to call on him or not? It happens all the time. It happens all the time. That's what he did. He comes and puts you a black thing on your... You're not allowed to... No, it's not. It's not. It's not. So let's categorize. According to what we said, what would come out? It's not part of most there, right? Because that person, maximum, they're going to tell them to close this pool. But it's just property. Right. So it's not part of most there. But on the and 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 they're also going to find it properly. The question is, it's tsar yachid. It's tsar yachid. It's not tsar rabin. I don't know if that's called a rabbin. I don't know if that's called a rabbin in the family. One family, I don't know if that's called a rabbin in these, in these halachot. In certain halachot, three people is rabbin. I don't think over here that, 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 that's called rabbin. The question is, he's causing a lot of... But he's, but, so the question over here is like this. So you're not allowed to ask your, uh, call the police mitzad rodef. You're not allowed to call the police mitzad tzar rabbin. The question is, is that he's mazik your mamon. Are you allowed him to... He's right now being mazik your mamon. He's maybe. Of what do you mean? Uh, my house is not usable. It's very hard. What do you mean? I have, I have. You know what? I built. I bought this house for two million. You know why? 
five hundred thousand dollars in this house because the back was only glass, and I always wanted to have. Total, total view. This is why I bought my house. Now you're taking away that part of the house. And he has, doesn't have the right to do that. The house is yours. The street is not yours. But he's not allowed to do that. He is causing me damage that he's not allowed to do. But he's not allowed to do that. He's not allowed to do the pool. So, so the question is... So there's there's a difference. It's going to depend on the case. If a person feels that there's a hezek coming to him, some poskim will allow such a thing because it's a hezek coming directly to him. Let's say a person is doing all types of renovations on a home that's that's damaging him. That's damaging him. It's a different question. It would have to de- it would have to depend on. It's not part of the Moser sugya. It's not part of the uh, of the sugya of 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 Sariyachit Sarabim. Part of another sugya. If somebody's damaging your money, what can you do to stop? Is it a garmi? Is it a grama? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there was a gym that had clear windows, and that's where the Hasidim lived, so they weren't able to pass by the street. Right. So what happened? Nothing. I don't know. Nothing to do with our sugya, though, because it was, uh, how, did, well, how, how, how is it connected to our sugya? I know. I know the government does. That wasn't the issue. I thought it was kind of yeah, they have a problem with Hazim because of their personal thing. So who says they have to live? I mean, it's a question. It's, that's part of more like a, a government political issue. If I pay taxes to live in this neighborhood, how much do you have to accommodate me or not? It really matters on the voting power power of the of the bodies involved. Okay, so I think we covered most of most cases. Bezat Hashem, we should never deal with these. It's not clear. There's going to be a difference of opinion. What's your opinion? So some will hold that he's being mazik your mom, and some will hold that at the end of the day he's going. You're you're causing him a loss that you're not supposed to, and you're not supposed to you're not supposed to uh, to cause him a loss if it's not bodily damaging you and it's not being mazik the rabbin. Hazaku baruch.